Hello everyone, welcome to another Star and Custom Races video. In this video, I'm going to be showcasing Chiron just as a whole, as a race. It's going to be just an overview, the tech tree, each unit, what it does, some of its abilities, some of the mechanics of Chiron. Um, so yeah, let's uh, hop into this game. It's just against the very easy AIs, because I do want to show a couple of interactions. Um, hopefully with some of the units, uh, which do require uh, an opponent to properly observe, see what they do. Um, but anyway, so Chiron, the worker, just like any other worker, uh, like the probe, it has 20 shields and 20 HP. Unlike the probe, the HP, so this is light, biological, and mechanical, uh, same tags as the SCV. So this, its HP regenerates over time, like a, uh, like like a Zerg unit, and its shields regenerate at about a similar rate to a similar rate to to how the shields generate for Protoss. However, in order for them, this is a big mechanic for Chiron. Uh, in order for any unit to regenerate its shields, it needs to be within this power field of the Citadel. Now that means. I'll show this to you now. So I'm going to go outside of the Citadel. He's going to take a bit, of, a bunch of damage and see he's not going to generate shields. This is effect here. Suspension. The shield restoration is, is disabled. Bring this unit close to a Citadel while out of combat. Or target it with a Ward's restitution spell to restart it. So the Ward is another unit which has that special ability. But I go back in here, it'll start regenerating. Even if I go back out again, it will continue regenerating until it's hit again. Now, the first building we're going to be making here is the edifice. This building, I believe it provides four supply. Uh, six supply, rather. Uh, yep. So all, pretty much every single uh, three by three current structures provide six supply. Um, this structure is a 175 mil structure. Actually, that's surprising. I thought it was 200. There, it's, it's shifted around 200 minerals and 225 minerals a lot. I don't remember the patch which changed it to 175, <laughs> to be honest. But um, anyway, this is essentially the barracks of Chiron, the gateway. I'm going to start our expansion here. This is 400 minerals, just like any other expansion. Um, something as well about Chiron building is that they won't get their shields while they're building. Once they finish building, then all the shields will just instantly uh, come with them when they finish. As for the gas, the formulator, uh, you can build it at a range of four. Uh, Karen workers, they can build any building at a range of up to of about up to four range. Um, the formulator costs 75 minerals, just like any other uh, gas harvest station structure. Um, but anyway, the edifice, uh, you can produce two units from the edifice. Those units are the vault and the pariah here. Actually, I need to free up some supply. We'll wait for the citadel to finish. And then, so, because every structure in Chiron, it provides a small amount of supply, um, or mid medium amount of supply, and they produce only one to two units. Most structures produce two unit, two unit types. So because of that, Chiron has an absolute ridiculous ton of different production structures. Okay, pretty much every single three by three structure produces, except for the reliquary, which is an upgrade structure. I'll build that now. This is also 175 minerals and provides six supply. Instead of producing any units, you can make all the Chiron. Uh, numeric upgrades, so both for um, mechanical and all that. Now, I'll make our first unit here, I'm going to make the vault. Both edifice units are 50 minerals each. The vault has 20 shields, 35 HP, it's light and biological. Its attack looks like this. There's 8 damage and attack with a weapon speed of 1.25. It's pretty okay. It's a bit like the Marine in a lot of ways. It has one more range than the Marine does, I believe. I 
could be wrong. No, I think it. I think it has one more range. Uh, don't quote me on that though. And but it, it has a higher damage per shot, so it shoots much slower than the marine. Um, so that makes it slightly better against targets with like high armor, like for example an ultralisk or something. Um, I'm going to start up our next structure now. This is going to be the Sanctum. This is a 200 mineral structure. This is essentially the cyber core, the cybernetics core of Chiron. With the Sanctum, uh, the Sanctum unlocks these three advanced structures, the Elysium, Foundry, and Outlet. As for the Edifice, the Edifice unlocks the Sanctum, as well as the Conduit, which is our first air production structure. So I'll make the Conduit as well. The Conduit, I believe, is also 200 minerals. Yep. And something about air structures, which I'll showcase later, is that you can build them over dead space as well. Which is where the range of the converter comes in handy. Now the other unit here, it's a 50 mineral unit, it's a melee unit. It's a little bit like a, a weaker zealot. It's the pariah here. It attacks pretty fast, its DPS is pretty okay. It does 8 damage like the, like the vault, except it does attack much faster at 0.7. Something else as well is that it technically has a weapon range of 1, so it's not actually melee, which means sometimes, because of their small size as well, sometimes you can have two layers of these melee units like attacking. So for example, I'll try to please stop moving. As you can see, this unit behind these other two, they're all able to hit the citadel. It's not just... Um, it's not just the uh, the front one. It also has an ability, as you can see down here, called projection. This allows it to go through other units. It's a bit like a charge, except it goes through other units. As you can see, just like, just like that, passes like an adept shade. Um, I'm gonna grab the gases here, and. The strength, essentially, the big strength of the Pariah, because it's 50 minerals, but doesn't have nowhere near as tanky as the Zealot. It has a good DPS, but not that great. The real strength of the Pariah comes from this ability, essentially ignoring surface area. So if your opponent is in a really good position, like in a choke, all their army, like say they have 50 marines and they're all just bunched up in a big ball, most units will only be able to attack from the outside of the big ball. They won't be able to hit all the units at once. But this will just be able to shade or project itself right in the middle of that ball. And everything, all of those marines will be getting hit all at once by all of your pariahs. Um, this does make for some very interesting interactions, but... Uh, so I'm going to make a couple more of these units just to defend the first attack away from a very easy AI. Um, but the next structure we're going to be making... Your unit under attack. Yep, there you go, here it is. As you can see, you can also kind of use it to micro back if you really want to as well. I wouldn't say it's very useful for that, at least not in most cases. But um, while we're just here, I'm going to get the modified gate upgrade. This is 100 minerals, 100 gas. And 100 seconds to produce. There's no tech requirements for this upgrade. It just increases the movement speed of these two units, the edifice units, Volton Pariahs, by quite a significant amount. Now, something I haven't explained yet, but is also a very integral part of Chiron, is every single production production structure generates charges like a warp gate. Now, different structures can hold different amounts of charges. The edifice. Is the only structure that can hold three charges. As you can see, this gray bar at the top is the speed at which these charges are produced. It's currently already holding two charges. If I spend these two unit charges, then it goes much faster. So the way this works is that if it's holding no charges at all, it will produce its charges at a hundred percent production rate. As you can see, uh, I guess the cooldown bar is not quite there at the moment because we're researching the upgrade. But um, it produces it at 100% production rate. If it is storing one charge, it will produce it um, at a 66% production rate. So only two thirds of the speed. And if it's holding two unit charges, then it'll only produce it at 33% speed. So that's just one 
third of the production time. Now that last bit only affects the edifice because it's the only structure able to hold three charges. Almost every single Chiron structure will hold a maximum of two, like you can see the Sanctum here. Actually, I'm wrong, I lied. The Conduit can also hold three unit charges. I'm not sure if that's changed at all. I probably hasn't. But <laughs> it only affects the Conduit and the Edifice, which are the only two structures that hold three unit charges. Everything else, the Sanctum, Elysium, Foundry, Outlets, Atrium, and Empyrean all hold two charges, whilst these late game structures here, the Zenith and the Pantheon, they only can hold one unit charge at a time. These unit charges produce automatically, it's free. The cost comes from when you do actually shape in the units, which you can see there, it does spend the money. Now, the next units we're going to be making, well, actually, first, by the way, the Vault can indeed hit air, the Pariah obviously cannot, so we're going to be able to push away these Overseers. The next units I'll make are the Sanctum units, the Pulsar, and the Subjector. Now, the Pulsar, I kind of think of this as like a, as if, if the Adept could actually fight, it was a fighting unit rather than a harassing unit. This is its maximum speed, there's no way to increase the speed, as you can see it's quite slow, but, as you also just saw there, it can attack while moving. Makes it very strong in timings, because you can really kind of stick in the fight much easier. Uh, this does have an upgrade. The Subjector also has an upgrade for it, for itself. Now you can see as well, these units, Modified Gate is finished, they're much faster. And that projection also goes out, stretches out much further. Um, now the Pulsar has very high DPS against light, 10 damage about three times a second, slightly less than three times a second. And then the Subjector, the damage against ground is okay, it's pretty mediocre. Um, it's not, nothing to nothing to scoff at, but uh, you know, still still not not the worst DPS in the world at all by any means. Uh, but against air, it has it does have an air attack. The Pulsar cannot shoot air. This I often think of. I compare it a lot to the Goliath because its air attack is much much stronger. Uh, now you might have seen. You saw the health bar go down much quicker for the shields. And but don't be fooled. The shields of Chiron for most structures they're generally around about only one third of the total HP. So whereas Protoss it's about half of their total hit points, the shields for Chiron it's only about a third. So the actual the green bar is much much. Uh, tankier, the, it'll go down much slower than the yellow bar, essentially. So if the yellow bar gets depleted like instantly, that doesn't mean it's really weak or something. Um, so yeah, now there is a range upgrade in here, called Amplified Spheres. It increases the range of the Subjector, it increases the ground attack range by 1, from 6 to 7, and the air attack range by 2. I believe it is 2, it might be 3. I'm fairly certain it's two though. Uh, so it does end up getting quite a significant anti-air range. Ain't range. Uh, makes it very, very strong at uh, kiting or you know stutter stepping into an opponent's air army. Um, if you're needing to counter your like an enemy air unit or something, like if you're trying to chase or run away from an enemy air unit. Um, So that's the subjector. Think of it as like a Goliath, basically. Now it is faster than the Stalker as well, so that um, it allows you to kite things, uh, like in the early game, gain a lot of map control if your micro is good. But um, it is a certain commitment because you generally want to have at least two sanctums in order to properly kind of pressure your opponent with subjectors. Seven range also does mean, by the way, with this upgrade, is that you'll outrange bunkers, which do not have like marauders or ghosts. In. So a bunker with only reapers or marines. Okay, now moving to the pulsar, it does have 
talked about this already, but through range, shoot while moving. This upgrade here though, dampener, it requires an Elysium, I'll get that later. This upgrade absorbs 70% of spell and splash damage. So think things like EMP, things like snipe, because it is biological. Things like the Oracle laser, uh, that's spell damage. It'll take less damage from that. It takes two EMPs to remove to completely remove these shields. Um, but it also takes significantly reduced splash damage. So even though it is a light unit, Banelings do have a very hard time against pulsars. At least once they have this upgrade. Uh, things like Banelings, things like siege tanks, things like widow mines. They won't do very much damage at all. Um, however, this upgrade, this dampener effect. It's not a constant effect, it will apply itself for 3 seconds, and then it has a 10 second cooldown. Well, yes. Um, so perhaps if you trigger this, and then you come in with your Banelings, then the Pulsars will really evaporate. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna make some static defense. I'll show you the nullifier, the stratus, I'll actually make a few of them. Now the stratus is an, is an air structure, it's a floating structure, uh, cannot be hit by melee units obviously. And this is your anti-air structure, the ground structure, it's your anti-ground anti structure, so pretty simple. There's another structure which is not, these both require a reliquary by the way, this building here. There's another structure which only requires an, uh, a, what do you call it, an edifice, the oculus, this is a 50 gas, 75 mineral structure, so no, no absolute pushover when it comes to an investment, investing gas into a structure is not for gross, as you can see it here, the stratus A range, very significant, uh, very significant damage, very significant um, range as well. Does mean things like, say for example, phoenixes will be able to kill this. Like, unlike missile turrets where your, let's say, like some phoenixes will have to leave at some point, these can be killed by units such as that. Now this, now the oculus is your detector structure. So these, neither, neither of these detect. The oculus does. It also has an ability, Reveal, allows you to simply just permanently see any area of the map within a certain range. Okay, so you can see here on the minimap, you can see the range at which I can cast it. Now, I'm going to make some more units to do with this little pressure, and I'm going to use Energize as well. Now, Energize. It appears I use my, my uh, muscle memory, but um, there's an icon up here before you energize the citadel called Charge Citadel. It's 125 minerals, it allows you to charge a citadel to give it this purple bar, the energy bar, and for 50 energy you can energize your citadel. This increases the mining time, so as, as you'll see here the mining time will, will be decreased. Plus the movement speed, so it increases your income by a little bit. It's not the greatest amount. And then, but the biggest use of it is that it gives all of your units plus three shield armor. So they'll be extremely, extremely resistant to really uh, anything. Like say, for example, the phoenixes, which can kill these stratas. You use this energize, and it'll get plus three shield armor. That's minus six damage. Per Phoenix shot as long as it still has shields left. That's pretty insane because Phoenixes do attack twice. Um, make some nullifiers here. I'll put an Oculus here so we can have detection, though I'd only really require that against, say, Protoss and the Dark Templar. There's also a little effect here as well. I press stop here so it's not channeling the ability. Once it's channeling, so I'll place it here, you'll see 
it opens up a little bit, there's there's a bit of a light here. I think this effect used to be slightly more obvious, but you can tell if an oculus is revealing an area or not based on that small effect. Again, stop. It goes down, it's not glowing as much in the center anymore. I use it. And then it starts glowing, has this little fog in the middle. So this is a bit of a macro tool, but it is much stronger defensively than it is as a macro tool. It also increases your shield regeneration rate. However, there is a little delay uh, of shield regeneration while they're in combat. Now, I'm going to start moving on to the next structures, the next units. So I will produce these three structures here, an Elysium. You can see their cost here as a hover over them, a foundry, and your outlet. Now this is essentially, I like to think of it as a Twilight Council, no more gas in the Western uh, Canada, Robo Bay, or a factory, and then your Stargate or Starport. Because, as you'll see here, these upgrades, they require an Elysium, kind of like how a Twilight Council has upgrades for gateway units. And these other two structures, the Foundry and the Outlet, these, this unit here is unlocked by the foundry. Uh, this thing here is unlocked by the foundry, rather, it's not a unit. And then that thing is then unlocked by the atrium. Same for the zenith, it's unlocked by the empyrean. The, the empyrean is also unlocked by the sanctum. So I guess both of these are a bit like the, the starport. Um, but essentially, this is like your factory line or your robo line. This is your air unit line, even though this is also an air producing structure. Uh, I'll show you, but no more minerals, down here as well is where you actually materialize your units. You can build, but it's ground units and air units. So this produces air units. I'm going to make an echo and a fuse. Man, this is a much longer video than I was expecting it to be. Your units under attack. And I'm not even halfway. Again, I'll actually show you what this energizer looks like here. I use Discord mode as well. So this slows down enemy unit speed. It doesn't affect your own movement speed at all. So it won't decrease your own movement speed, but it'll decrease their movement speed. As you can see here. Does it not? That's something new. I don't think it affects Ultralisks. Because they're immune to slowing effects, like fungal growth, for example. Now this unit here, the Echo, it can only shoot air units. It's extremely fast, 6.3 movement speed. I think the only unit that's faster than this is a Zergling on creep, a speed Zergling on creep, I believe. Extremely fast. Does pretty decent DPS against air uh, at three range. Used to actually be mainly a while ago. Um, yeah, very good at chasing down units. You can use it a little bit like Corsair. It kind of shoots a bit like a Corsair. Um, if you have if you have them in high numbers, they're very good at just simply jumping on an opponent's army. You see here. Very good at jumping on an opponent's like army or something, just absolutely murdering everything. Um, and then it has two abilities here. So it has Sonic Image. This is where it gets its name from, by the way. This is like an echo. This is its echo, and then it has Reverb, where it will teleport back to the Sonic Image. Very low cooldown. But obviously it can't teleport forwards or anything. It'll only teleport to where the shade is. Now this does have a certain range. You can see this, this squiggly line. Eventually if I go too far away, it'll run out. And it won't immediately reset the cooldown, but it's pretty short anyway. I could run here. I've, I've used it and seen it used like this. So they'd put it out, uh, you know, somewhere, like over a mineral line. And then they will... Once it starts getting attacked, they'll teleport back, 
and then they'll move away. I'll show you actually here. This is the reason why I got an A, the AI, because I did want to show this, and it doesn't affect friendly units. So I'll move it over here. I'll place my sonic image away from the base, then I'll move the echo to over their mineral line. So it decreases the movement speed, decreasing the mining time, Decreases the mining, by the way, as well. No so it takes longer for them to actually mine the minerals as well as simply just slowing down their movement speed. Um, and then, see, they have a corruptor, it's in trouble. I teleport back here, transform, fly away. Very cool stuff. Um, that's the echo. It has one upgrade here uh, Dissonance Projector. This allows it to be cloaked while in Discord mode. So they'll see the They'll still see this mo this uh, purple field, but they won't see the echo. Okay. Now the next units here. Okay, from the is the fuse. This also is from the conduit. This unit. That's actually higher than I remember. Fifty gas and a hundred minerals, and two supply, and this doesn't attack at all. The strength of this unit comes from you can fuse it onto another unit to grant it additional shields. It's 125 extra shields. You're transferring the shields, whoops, transferring the fuse from the shields from the fuse onto the targeted unit. Or just simply just stay on there like that. It's very cool. I like it a lot. I'll show you this uh, subjective range upgrade by the way. Very cool stuff, yeah. It's 8 range. Very good, very, very good damage. Very microball as well. And the fuse, as for the fuse, you can also stack it. Now, some people say, Oh, that's so overpowered. Oh, look at that. There's 435 shields on this unit. This unit is 8 supply now. There's 8 supply. 3 fuses. You can see the fuses here, you can unfuse, um, plus the supply of the subjective. It's eight supply. This has an upgrade as well, interlacing bond, which means every single fuse adds an additional 0 0.5 shield armor. Again, very cool stuff. I like it a lot. <laughs> this is why I play this mod so much. Um, so, next unit is the ward. The, fu the fuse, uh, the regeneration, by the way, the shield regeneration of the fuse stacks with the shield regeneration of the unit that you put it on. So, for example, I'm going to fuse these to the ward. I'm going to take the shields down a bit. And watch them regenerate very, very quickly. That's because it has four units worth of shield regeneration all stacked up on top of each other. Now, the ward, as you can see, I'm not in Citadel range, and yet it's regenerating shields. Why is that? This unit's special purpose is essentially shield distribution and shield regeneration. So this unit would regenerate shields just anywhere. It doesn't need a Citadel, and it can use restitution to begin the shield restoration in other units. So, I'll show you that here. You can see there's a little area that says it will use up 50 shields from the ward and it will transfer 50 shields onto this subjector. But then the area, this area that it's covering, it will kickstart the shield regeneration in these other two subjectors here that won't transfer any shields directly to them. So you can see here, 50 shields and the shield regeneration in these other two units is now kickstarted again. Now it has a second ability, Shield Dome, which then transfers all of the shield into a little protective dome. So now this ward only has 100 HP, so if you kill this ward, this, the dome completely dies. But this dome, which stacks with the fuses, is now protecting these subjectors with about, I believe it was, 625 worth of shield hit points. Pretty good. It is affected by EMP, this dome, fairly sure. But it doesn't have any armor tags, so it won't take any bonus damage. Nothing in here will take splash damage. 
Um, it'll just be one single universal damage on this little dome here. That's the strength of the dome. That's why you might prefer using the dome rather than simply just restoring the shields after they take damage. Um, this has a small cooldown. Restitution has no cooldown. No more mineral um, can with you. You have exhausted I can't build here. Now we move on to we move on to the Elysium. Now the Elysium unlocks these upgrades here. Latent charge, the vault bounce attacks allow us to deal I'm gonna actually add on some additional edifices. Okay. So you can see here the dome very useful, but disappears once the ward is killed. It's a channeled ability, so the ward can't attack and can't move while it's being used. There's a small cooldown on fusion, by the way, once it's un once it unfuses, and you can't put you can't fuse fuses to another fuse. <laughs> Confusing sentence to say, but this ability here, latent charge, it'll allow vault attacks to bounce a little bit like a mutilus glaive, and it will deal three spell damage, so it will ignore armor completely. So. Essentially means the vaults practic just get simply plus three damage, just a single bounce, I believe. Just a single bounce which does three damage, plus three attack essentially is what it's giving it. But to a different target, so it's not to a target that's not a single target that it's shooting at. Um, so with a lot of vaults, that can make them pretty good. Uh, just makes the vault an all-around better unit, you know, a little bit like the marine stim and combat shields. This is like the modified gate and lane charge. Now the other upgrade, pretty straightforward as well, Pariahs gain plus 10 shields. Need I say more? Uh, I'm going to research damper as well, so you'll be able to see it, potentially against those ultralisks that they've been building. Um, a couple more sanctums and then the Elysium produces one unit type actually most units can produce two different units so Elysium only one and it has an ability called, uh, researchable ability called convergence it can produce this unit here it's the crux it's the spell cast one of the big spell casters of Chiron this unit has a pretty decent attack very low HP it's light. It used to just be biological and psionic. It's light as well now. Um, and its attacks, it'll gain plus five energy for attacking biological things, biological units, or biological structures. Uh, it has an ability called Beholder. This gives it additional vision range, as you see here. I believe it's plus two vision range, as well as. The detection, so they'll become a detector. So that's essentially a pretty good detector for Chiron that you might want to be using. And yeah, it has a second ability, Lightning Bolt. This will chain. This is a chained ability, so it will bounce onto two additional targets, it will do 80 damage to the primary target, and then deal 40 damage to the two targets that it bounces towards. Now it won't bounce to my own targets, so you'll only see the main thing, but I can use the main ability on my own structures. that you see there, 80 damage, pretty good, 125 energy, but the strength of course is that it will regen energy much quicker, 5 energy a shot when attacking biological units, including your own and structures. There's something something you can do is like potentially fuse a unit and then just have them 
Just kind of nibble on that for a little bit. <laughs> the damage is pretty solid as well. 15 damage. At 8 in range. So they're quite a good simply just backline support unit. Um, and then there's that. I'm going to research Convergence. Convergence! It's a bit like Storm, a bit like a Disruptor hit. Um, so it has a channeled time, like a Disruptor, where it won't deal any damage. You just place it on a single area, and then it'll deal all its damage at once. It does 50 damage. It's pretty... it's alright. But it does plus 50 versus Mechanical. So 100 damage against Mechanical air units in about the same radius as a Psionic Storm. Now this means, because it does deliver it all at once, that means you can stack it as well. Psionic Storm doesn't stack, Disruptor hits do stack, Convergences do stack. It's 150 energy though. Actually ridiculous. Uh, Blizzard please buff this unit. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. It's, it's definitely strong enough as it is. Yeah. So that's... Oh, and it will do friendly fire. So... That's no joke. That is no joke. The amount of damage there. And if I decided to... Use two at once, all of those units would be gone. Okay. Next units. I've actually... I've actually already made the ward, which is a foundry unit. The next unit I will make is the Umbra. Loka referred to these as a hamster, and I agree. I'm going to get Stealth Compulsion, it's 200-200. Now these Umbra, they're cloaked units, they're permanently cloaked. Except when they attack, they decloak. So you can get these out fairly early, to be honest. But they do decloak once they attack. They decloak for about... It's 8 seconds. So eight seconds. And additionally, so I used hold fire on them, so they won't shoot. They will do double the damage on their first attack after they decloak, and then they'll continue doing other, you know, just normal damage. So the one shot drones, and then the two shot drones. But they regenerated a little bit. Excuse me. He doesn't even have armor upgrades. Why aren't they? Why isn't that one shot? Thank you very much. Anyway, I'll just get some. No, I won't. So then I can just show you the flat damage. Um, but then obviously, this ability here, Stealth Compulsion, it allows the Umbra to instantly recloak itself again at the price of 15 HP. And it only has 75 hit points. Most of its tankiness is in its shields. But Stealth Compulsion, of course, and I'll showcase this perhaps over at this space over here. Um, it'll significantly increase the DPS because you'll get that 200, you'll get that 100% damage increase over and over again. Now it's two Umbra did all of that damage, but now there are. They don't really have any HP left, only the shields. Excuse me. Alright. Uh, Energize, actually. Something I forgot to mention. It does increase the shield, uh, the HP regeneration rate as well. Now. On to the next units, I'm going to be moving on to the outlet units, and then on to the atrium units. I'm going to make a couple atriums here. Um, okay, so these, so if, if you see a flying structure, it's flying units. All the flying units are made by flying structures. All the flying structures only make flying units. So, the outlet I'm going to do first. Now, the outlet can produce the transport for Chiron, as well as the Oracle Banshee equivalent for Chiron, the Aurora. This, the Aurora, light biological, mechanical, can be sniped. It's actually crazy. 
It has one ability, it's an emanator, just a free little vision orb that used to detect, it can't anymore, but it's just a nice bit of map vision, you can gain good map control with these auroras, uh, just simply throwing out a couple of emanators and these last 100 seconds, which is quite a while. Now the damage on the auroras is quite strong, they will two shot SCVs, which have 45 HP, so keep in mind, yeah, they do about the same amount of damage as a Banshee, similar similar DPS as well, I think, similar attack speed, I'm not sure of the exact attack speed of a Banshee. Now, the Aperture has the same cargo space as any old dropship, it does have one ability, actually it has a feature as well, I'll show you that. So it instantly unloads all of its units. All of them, all at once. It can, it can pick them up just like any other dropship, but it'll unload them all at the same time. Now this keyhole ability can be used whether it's full or not. If it's not full, I will show you. You can use it on a unit. It will use some of this energy here to then put the unit that you're teleporting inside of the aperture, or, alternatively, it'll just put it underneath it, just like that. It's a bit like a mini recall, in a way. Now this does cost much more H, uh, much more energy, the more cargo space the unit will take. So something like an Umbra, that used 10 energy, I believe, yeah, yeah, yeah 10. Um, it's a bit hard to tell the difference between a 9 and a 10 with this uh, font. But uh, including air units as well. They can't put the air units inside it, obviously, but you can teleport them around. That means you can kind of use it with um, an air unit, a little bit like a BC tactical jump, defensively or offensively, I guess. Um, they will use a lot of energy the larger the unit is. Uh, for some reason, it accidentally took up my Nexus hotkey. For the glory of Protoss, yeah, that's the Aperture and that's the Aurora. Uh, the Aurora, by the way, is biological. There's something about current upgrades. It's biological weapons, biological armor, mechanical weapons and mechanical armor. And, and shields, which is universal. If it says biological and mechanical, most Chiron units uh, are like a cyborg. So they will be biological and mechanical. That means it benefits from biological upgrades. Like you can see the pulsar here has the little biological um, icon. And mechanical units, like the Umbra here, does not have the biological tag. If it doesn't have the biological tag, that means it will benefit from mechanical upgrades. So the Aurora here, because it is biological, it will benefit from the same upgrades that these vaults do. It's like the Banshees and the Marines share the same upgrade for attack. It's a bit interesting. Um, now, the Empyrean units. It can make two units. It can make an air spellcaster called the Gyre and the Harbinger. At the moment, I believe the Gyre needs a bit of a rework because it's in a bit of an awkward spot at the moment with its abilities, though the ability ideas are very cool. Now first I'll show you the Harbinger. The Harbinger can two-shot workers, just like the Aurora actually. It was recently just nerfed and changed. It can't two-shot workers anymore without attack upgrades. With attack upgrades it can. Uh, it also has a pretty decent air attack. Mineral fuel exhausted. As you can see, very solid, 18 damage, 0.6 attack speed, very nice, it, it can switch as well into judgement mode, and this judgement mode will allow it to do splash damage over time. So splash damage over time, uh, obviously it's a friendly unit so it's not going to take the splash damage, but you can see that little lingering effect that just kind of stands there for a little while. See if I can use it against this uh, overseer here, you'll see it take a little bit of extra damage over time while it's in that little field. I don't believe it stacks, but don't quite know. And then it can switch between those modes freely 
The Judgment Mode disables its ground attack and also makes it much slower. Now, as for the Gyre, it has Shackle, which will very simply just freeze enemy air units in place. It looks like this, and then cast in that area. They can still shoot, they can still cast their abilities, they just cannot move, just for a short time. It's not for too long, just four seconds. Its other ability turns it into a UFO. It's called Annex. Watch this. We'll steal these units, dealing some damage over time, and then just transport them somewhere else. Now this is why I think it's a bit broken, because sometimes you'll either be take, you'll either be doing infinite damage, um, like infinite splash damage, if you say you have like a splash damage unit, you'll be doing a crazy amount of splash damage, and it disables your opponent's attacks and whatnot. You have exhausted all the minerals or, in the cluster. Because it's like a melee ability, the Gyre will just get completely destroyed before it's able to do anything, which is why I think that ability needs a rework. But, um, anyway, on to the next unit. So, we've made some atriums now. This is like a bit of a robo bay. I'm gonna move on, I'm gonna make some pantheons, some zeniths for our final units. Now, while we wait for that, the Atrium can produce two massive units. These both cost six supply. They're very expensive, but they're both quite strong. Now, first of all, we have the Inducer. This does bonus against massive, 30 damage, and 40 against massive. Now, the attack speed for this unit is dependent entirely on the distance it is from the thing that you're attacking. Because it may only attack when this little orb that you can see on its back is docked. So the orb will bounce back and forth between the thing it's attacking and the unit itself. So if I'm further away, it's going to have a lower DPS. If I'm much closer, much quicker DPS. Much, much higher. It doesn't have the highest HP. And it is armor mechanical massive, quite slow, quite clunky. And its counterpart, the Myriad, similarly, slow, clunky, very big, it's massive, armor mechanical. Um, only has 25 extra HP. Um, it has no base armor. But the main difference is, of course, this, the splash damage, and a bonus against light. This shoots out little elytras which deal its damage for it. But it also has a melee attack of its own, called Lunge. Um, now these are Lytron... There's been some bugs where I can travel up cliffs, I'm not sure if you can still do that. But you can, for example... It's quite a very large splash area. You can see, very very large. Each Elytron will attack two to three times before having to return and like recharge. And it also has that melee attack. Which is quite actually decent to be honest, but um obviously as you can see there not much to see it's only a single myriad. And a single myriad on its own isn't very tanky either. So it mostly relies on the Elytron to tank for it. The Elytron having I believe it's 80 HP and 20 shields. And then, now, for our next... Units. The, the units produced by the Zenith and by the Pantheon. Now the Pantheon creates the Titan, which is a very large walker it has decent ish range it's got five range you can shoot while moving and it reduces the enemy attack speed by 60 percent and its splash damage as well and it the effect is in an area as well so i'm not sure if it will affect friendly units i'll just check it won't um 
but it can also walk over small units. It won't walk over units like the Myriad or the Indusa, but uh, these two units here. But uh, these smaller units, it can walk over, make it much easier to use. And then the other, so think of it as a bit like a Colossus Ultralisk combo. That's how I like to think of it. Now the other unit, it's the capital ship of the Chiron. This unit is 8 supply, it's an absolute beast. The Titan is 6 supply. This unit is an absolute beast. Without spellcasters, the only units that can beat this, cost for cost and supply for supply, or or supply for supply, I should say, is the Thor and the Mazalisk. Other than that, without spellcasters, nothing can beat this unit. Oh, well, without spells, that is. I think BCs and Yamato can do, can work. But this unit, it costs 450, 350. It has a very long range, anti-air attack, 10 range against air, 40 damage at 1.25 attack speed. That is quite solid. It's like a long range missile. It doesn't actually have a name, it's just a parallel air weapon and ground weapon. That should actually be fixed. Um, in the ground attack, it, it attacks like a BC against ground. It will shoot while moving against ground. Against air, it won't shoot while moving. However, this turret is the thing that actually shoots for it. So, if I show you here, the paragon faces this way. The turret turns, not the paragon. So, like an immortal or like a siege tank, you can simply just kite extremely easily. Uh, because you won't have to wait for the unit to stop in order to attack. So look, it can shoot while moving, it attacks like a BC against ground. And against air, it attacks a bit like a Tempest, um, except it can kite much better than a Tempest can. And it has better DPS than a Tempest. Against ground as well, it's 12 damage a shot. So it ignores armor, well it pierces armor I should say, much better than some other um, units and abilities. Well, so, like, much better than, say, the Battle attack. Now, the... It also has an ability for 125 energy. The Emissary Orb... Who's it now? It, it's a lot like Hunter Seek himself. So it'll follow the enemy and then do a large amount of splash damage. Let's see if I can show this here. You can only use it against ground units, but there, it does splash damage. You've got to be very careful when facing this orb. Now, one last thing. I should have been making it during this time because it takes a while to produce. 400, 400. It's the Aegis. It's the mothership of the Chiron. However, so you need, you can only have one, of them, one at a time. You produce it from the Citadel. You can have either a Pantheon or a Zenith to produce this. And, whoops. And this will... It can attack. It can teleport to other Citadels. And it has a very large shield. I'll show you once it's done, it's the attack of the ward, by the way. Not very good, just two attacks, six damage each. You can use restitution on structures. Something else as well, I forgot to mention, convergence also affects structures. Of course, for the damage it deals, it doesn't really, it's not super significant. But there you go, six sound effect. This is relocate 50 energy, activate shield, also 50 energy. Has Bulwark Blast, 10 range, 40 damage. It's pretty solid. But the shield, it has a radius of 10, so it won't be able to attack while its shield is active. It'll bounce enemy units away, so enemy units cannot enter. And it, ha and it will, this large, larger dome 
That's 3,000 hit points. It'll take a lot to kill this. However, a max out army will make fairly quick work with this shield. And once, if you do kill the shield, it'll only be left, it won't have any shield left. If you kill the shield. I don't have any energy left. Ah, yes. So, the crux will also drain energy from opponent, from enemy units. Um, that it attacks. But, anyways, that was long, very long video. My voice is getting sore. And that is going to be the end of this showcase. I believe I have covered everything. All of the defensive structures, all of the structures in general. I didn't get any numeric upgrades, but those work just like any other upgrades. And I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye and good riddance. <laughs>